had a little computer problem on the end of the last one. Sorry for the ab uh, abrupt transition or abrupt stop there. Where we were at was that phi star of f dx wedge dy. I'm going to write that out very explicitly. And I'm not going to always write it out so explicitly because it just takes time and it's a little messy looking. But this is what this f composed with phi really means. It's exactly what we always do when we're integrating over something and parametrizing. We put things into the u and v variables. So the goal is to get everything back to r2. And it's really important that u and v are the variables there. And x of u, v, y of u, v, z of u, v, these are not just boring functions. They're not just the coordinate functions in here anymore. They are things that describe how s sits in space. They are really coming from the explicit parameterization. We're kind of used to that from how we did these surface integrals before, but I wanted to emphasize that. OK. And then times d of x of u, v wedge d of y of u, v. So again, these are interesting functions. And that it tells us the way the next thing we need to do. We've got d of a function. It's not just dx or dy. Those are pretty boring, and we could probably figure out what to do with those if we want to integrate them. But we need to go one more step here um, to figure out what that is. Well, let's just abbreviate this back as f again. We'll just remember that it's supposed to be in terms of u and v. Okay. And then what we want to do is expand out this d. We know uh, we have a definition for d of a function. Now remember, this is in R2. So we have, and the coordinates are u and v. So d of any function, let's say g, is going to be the partial of g with respect to u du plus the partial g with respect to v dv. So that's the, only, that's the last piece of this puzzle, basically, besides some algebra that we're going to use, is this notion of the, the, the d. Now, this is going to be really interesting, because there's all this kind of stuff when we do this usually with uh, cross products and parallelograms and normals and stuff like that. And it's really just going to come out of algebra and this, the naturality of all these operations when we pull them back and the analog of the gradient, which is interesting. Like the gradient, what should the gradient have to do with surfaces? I thought that was about curves. But it's really cool that the gradient plus algebra is every other uh, thing you could possibly want, which is basically the, the punchline for this whole series of videos. So this is going to be partial x partial u du plus partial x partial v dv wedge the same thing with y's. And now I can use algebra. I can FOIL that out. The linearity and the, the, the distributivity lets me FOIL that out. I'm going to have to stick it up here. OK. That's going to be f times, what are we going to get? We're going to get a du wedge du. Well, let's think about that. du wedge du. What should that look like? du looks like this. And I'm trying to build like a, a grid with like that, that has cells in it. And I'm wedging it with itself. That's weird. OK. And if you think about cross products, you might have a suspicion. Hey, wait a minute. When I cross something with itself, I'm supposed to get 0. Well, there's a very simple way to see why du wedge du has to be 0. It's because if we believe in that anti-symmetry, du wedge du has to be minus of du wedge du. When I switch the order, nothing happens. The only thing that's minus itself is 0. So that's a very cool thing. It's very much like the cross product, like i cross i being 0. du wedge du is 0. dv wedge dv is 0. So that kills two of the four terms. And so I'm going to get dx du from this, dy dv um, times du wedge dv. OK? And now I'm going to get something here. I'm going to get a dv wedge du term. But hey, I can. Think of that as d minus du wedge dv. So I'm going to get minus dx dv dy du. OK. Whew. So that is phi star of f dx wedge dy. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. OK. The integral, it was supposed to be the integral of this over d. That was our actual integral over the surface of this guy. OK? And here's the last little trick. If you actually have just the coordinate functions, if you're just in R2 or R3 or Rn, and you actually just have the coordinate functions written in order with wedges in between, just drop the wedge. And voila, this is a function times du dv integrated. Oh, these should be double integrals. Integrated over a region. 
that's exactly uh, some, an integral we can do. Now, I want to show you that that really calculates the, the flux. Let's compare that to the old technology, just real quick. Um, the flux, remember if I wanted to think of dx wedge dy as a vector field, it looked like it was basically the vector field just k through the surface s. Okay, What do we have to do? k dot ds over s. We had to parameterize it. k dot, and then we, um, oh, uh, actually fk. Uh, it's like, let's put the f back in. Remember what I did was I took dx dy and I, I scaled it by an f. I was like, where did the f go? Okay, so that's fk. So that's going to be f times k dot. And what do we have to do to this? We have to take those like ru cross rv guys, du dv, and then dot it with k. So we're getting the k component of a cross product, and this is built out of partial derivatives. Okay, and so that's going to be integral of f. The k component of the cross product is exactly this guy. If you actually write it out, when I look at a cross product, the RU and the RV exactly have these partials in them, and the K component of the cross product is where I look at the X and Y information and not the K. And that minus sign, that's just really a two by two determinant. So wedge products secretly are a very flexible way to bring two by two determinants into things, and that two by two determinant is exactly what I would have gotten out of here. So the first time you see this, it's probably underwhelming. It's like, yeah, this was hard to understand and a lot of, and a lot of work, but this seemed maybe just as, as, just as much work. But I want to emphasize how I didn't have to really bring in anything outside of the world of forms here. All we used was the idea that the pullback operates on everything naturally. I can just bring the pullback into every little piece and, and commute it through the multiplication, the wedge, the D, and everything. I used the idea of the gradient, the basic operation of D here, um, and then algebra. And then that took me to du, du wedge dv, and then I could just treat that and say, oh, that looks like something, it looks really like something I can integrate, and indeed it is. Okay, so that's going to be how that works, and I probably should do examples in the next video.